ladies and gentlemen, I'm your host, Truman Bradley. And this is my friend Rex. Rex is what is known as a war dog. Right now, his master is in the next room. And over this walkie-talkie strapped to Rex's back, he will give Rex various commands. Sit. Lie down. Rex was trained to search for buried mines. The average dog's weight is too small to explode a mine, so equipped with an electronic mine detector and this walkie-talkie set, he was sent out in front of our troops to look for mines. His master would watch him with a pair of binoculars and give him voice commands through the radio how to zigzag across the mine fields. The dog walked back and forth a mile away from his master, following every order. When Rex got back, they found that the batteries were dead. Yet Rex had obeyed commands he couldn't possibly hear. The theme of the story we are about to bring you is based on the fact that animal psychologists think there is a scientific explanation to this mystery. <laughs> Our story takes us to a remote point of Florida, to an experimental station in the Everglades where science made a rendezvous with nature. Oh, well, Mrs. Stanton, you're home. Another kiss. Hey, you're home. Don't you want to look around? This isn't home. This is cloud number seven. I bet you can put my feet down. <laughs> Well, it's kind of a dusty, dirty cloud, I'm afraid. I guess I'm seeing it for the first time with your eyes, and it isn't very pretty. It's bound to be beautiful. I wish it were a castle. Oh, Bright's home is her castle. It has to be. Cloud number one. Never mind, Guy. In a week, you won't recognize the place. Nancy, you're not sorry. You don't mind being in the wilds of Florida. Are you the man I met at a Chicago convention a week ago last Thursday? Uh-huh. Are you the man that gave me dictation, then dinner, then movies, and a proposal of marriage all on the same night? That's me. I'm not sorry. I'm so very, very glad. What was that? Oh, it's a... It's a prison truck. What? Yeah, you see, there's a, a penitentiary down the road about 10 miles out. Just beyond the swamp. Just beyond the swamp? Yeah, uh, well, you see, uh, you see, we're located here sort of, uh, well, in the heart of a swamp. Swamp. Penitentiary. Before I feel very sorry for myself, you better give me another booster shot. <laughs> oh, hey, I got a surprise for you. You wait right here. Nancy, this is Terry. Terry, this is Nancy, my wife. <gasps> Nancy. Get him away from me. Don't let him come near me, Guy. All right, uh, stay there, Terry. Sit down. Sit down. Hey, sit. Well, darling, it's only... Take him away from here. Get him out of here, Guy. Well, but Nancy, it's only Terry. Why, well, he's perfectly harmless. He wouldn't hurt you for the world. Besides, he's my prized pupil. He's wonderful. Here, let me show you. Terry. No, 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 Guy, please. Please, I'm terrified of animals. Terrified. I can't help it, Guy. Just get him out of here. All right, Terry, go on out to the kitchen. Help yourself to a banana. Now, darling, what is it? Tell me about it. I, I know it's silly and unreasonable, Guy, but I can't help it. I'm, I'm terrified of animals. But you knew I was an animal psychologist. But I didn't know you lived with them. Nancy, I, I use animals in my research. That's why the lab's located here in the middle of a swamp. They need a moist, semi-tropical climate. 
Well, I have hundreds of animals here. Hundreds? Yes, I've lived with them and worked with them for seven years. Cats, mice, rats, dogs, Terry. Oh, no! No! But Nancy! Nancy, darling, I don't understand. What terrifies you so? Living, creeping, crawling animals. Why? Oh. Every time I see an animal, it can be a, a, a dog or a cat, any animal guy, a physical revulsion. I, I know it's silly, guy. No, it's not silly. It's a sickness, darling. It's a sickness we call a phobia. But we can cure it if we work together. Oh, this, this is all wrong, Guy. It's, it's just terribly wrong. Oh, maybe it'd be better if, I, if I, I just leave, you know. Now, Nancy, stop talking that way. I love you and I need you. And I'm not going to let you go. But, Guy, you don't know. Oh, yes, I do know. Now, all you have to do is get to know animals. Now, tomorrow morning, I'll take you down to the lab. Oh, no, can... Guy, I can't go down. For me? I'll try. Now, this is the guy who started me off. I just got my PhD in animal psychology when I read about him in the paper. It's just a cat. No, it's a very special cat. This cat belonged to a family in Chicago, and they moved to Cleveland. And when they were ready to move, they couldn't find him, so they had to leave him. Three months later, he turned up on their doorstep in Cleveland. You, you mean he followed them? Mm-hmm. But how did the cat know where they were? How did he know where to find them? I don't know. Come on, Guy, it's, it's scary. No, no, it's interesting. Animals are wonderful. You see, they've developed abilities that human beings haven't developed. Come over here. I show you. Now, these fellows can do something that humans can't do, too. Yeah. Fly. <laughs> yeah, but we can explain that. But how do you explain the fact that you can take these birds hundreds of miles from home, turn them loose, and they'll fly right back? What guides them home? Science doesn't know either. That's one of the things I'm working on here. It's amazing. Uh-huh, isn't it? Now. It's this ability, as well as others, that animals have, which humans don't have, that I call the X factor. The X factor? Uh-huh. Come on over here. This is Rita. Now, as far as science can tell, man only uses about 5% of his brain potential. What if we could help him learn to use some of that unused 95%? What do you mean? Well, the thing that keeps recurring over and over again with non-humans, that's animals, birds, and so forth, is what science calls extrasensory perception. It's a kind of mental telepathy, uh, what some people call mind reading. Mm -hmm. And that's where Terry comes in. Chimps are probably the most intelligent of all animals. I've been working with Terry for years now. First, teaching him to show me what he wanted. Things like uh, food and water. Hi, Terry. And teaching him the sound of simple words like water and banana. Up you go. Now you can understand the same number of words that a six-year-old child can understand. And the next step was to teach him to recognize the words visually. That's where this came in. You mean he, he, he can use this? He sure can. What's this, Terry? Wonderful. Guy, please, let's... Oh, oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Now, the next step, after he learned to go from uh, pictures, was to teach him to go directly from words. Now, uh, you can tell me, well, for example, uh, when he wants water. Next, I taught him the difference between like and dislike. Uh, how do you feel about bananas, Terry? You see, he understands an idea. Liking something is different from simply recognizing a picture. He knows he likes bananas. Does he know what dislike means? Oh, ask him. Dislike. 
Dislike. He knows the word all right. He hates his cage, don't you, Terry? Hate. Hate. <laughs> Take him away! Get him out of here! Come on, Terry. <laughs> Nancy? I'm leaving, Guy. Listen to me, darling. I I have a research grant, and I have a contract to run this experimental station. I, I was going to renew the contract, but I won't. I can't ask that of you, Guy. It's your work your whole life, and it's important, fascinating work. I can't deprive you of it. But it's just impossible for me. Nancy, I want just one thing from you. I want one week's time. One week's time to finish this last experiment. I... I love you, darling. I love you very much. Now, get up there, Terry. All right. Now, Terry. Terry, look at me. Terry, I want you to try very hard on this. Terry, look at me. Look at me. Now, is there anything you want? Is there anything you want, Terry? It's long past his lunchtime. I was hoping you'd let me know he's hungry. Terry, is there something you'd like? Is there something special you'd like, Terry? Nancy, I think he's going to do it. Atta boy, Terry. Atta, but uh, Terry, Terry, if you're hungry, what would you like? Ah, well, darling, we did it. We just had our first conversation with an ape. <laughs> In this lonely house in the middle of the swampland, scientific history was made. A dumb animal communicated with man. Harry? I know it's late, but I can't wait to try this last experiment. We're going to see if you can read my mind. I'm going to go clear across the room from you, and I'm going to give you a very simple command. One that you could understand easily if I gave it to you directly. Now, Terry, I want you to open the door of your cage, go over to my desk, and sit in the chair. Open the door of your cage. Go over to my desk and sit in the chair. Oh. Nancy, what's the matter? It's a black widow. Oh, John. Oh, don't cry, darling. Don't cry. Yeah, you can have this. You can keep it with you all the time. It's, it's no use, Guy. I've tried. If you love me, you'll come with me. I love you more than anything in the world, Nancy. You know that. Do you? Or is it those animals you love and Terry? Terry, 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 Terry. I'm, I'm sick and tired of hearing about Terry. And, and I'm afraid of him. And I'll tell you something else that's very funny. You'll laugh. I'm jealous. I'm jealous of Terry. Darling, darling. <laughs> well, that's Terry. I, I've got to put him back in his cage. I'll be right back. That's right. Go see what he wants. What's the matter, Terry? Well, you think you hear something on sound? There's nothing but the usual noises. Nothing to get excited about. Come on, let's go.
Come on, let's go to bed. <laughs> now, look, don't make me any more trouble. I've got enough as it is. All right, come on. You can go to the house with me for a few minutes. All right, come on. You go. Help yourself to a banana. Oh, Terry, relax. Take it easy. <laughs> here, all right. You stay here now. I'm going to go and see Nancy. Nancy, you all right? Is Terry all right? I'm sure that's much more important. Well, you're packed again. Terry should be delighted I'm leaving. You really going? Oh, Guy, it's just no use talking about it. We we can't make it, that's all. It won't work. All right. If that's the way you feel about it, I'll go get the car. Get back in there, mister. And just be quiet. I'm going to be here with you for a while. Sit down, lady. You got a car? You might as well tell me I'm going to find it anyway. That's in the garage. I'll take the keys. Any other people here? No, we're alone. Guy, who It's is one it? of the men from the penitentiary. Yeah, one of the men. I want that car and food. I'm crawling through that swamp for 18 hours. <laughs> What's that? This is a research station. It's a chimpanzee in the kitchen. A chimp? What's he doing out there? He's a pet. Bring him in here. I'd like to see him. Bring him in here! Yeah. All right, but don't get nervous and shoot him. He, he's harmless and he's valuable to my work. All right, Terry, come on in. Get up there. That's right. Well, he's cute. He's real cute. Get me some food, lady. Now, you stay, mister. You lady. Try anything funny, I'll kill him. Sit down, mister, right there. Cigarette. And my wife's purse. Get him. A wallet, too, mister. I might as well have yours. You and me about the same size. You could use a suit of clothes. You want to get some clothes for you now? No. Wait till she comes back with the food. What do you intend doing with us? They figure me for dead out there. Nobody ever got through that swamp before. What do you think, mister? You're not going to kill my wife. No, or later. Don't make no difference to me. Yeah, but why kill us at all? You might tell them I got through. If they find us murdered, they'll know you got through. Look, uh, what if we promise not to tell anyone we saw you? I'll think it over, mister. All right, lady. Put it right there. Now, you too. Sit over there. Come on, Terry. Come on. All right, sit down, Terry. I can only get upstairs to that bedroom and get the gun. I can... Hey, maybe Terry. Terry, 
Terry, go upstairs to the bedroom and bring me my gun. Upstairs, Terry, in the bedroom. What are you talking about? Oh, just talk. Better stop. I don't like talk. Don't talk. you two. I want some food to take with me. Let's all go into the kitchen. Or something. You got a laundry bag? Yeah, there's one in there. Canned goods. Anything I can eat without cooking. I got a long trip ahead of me. Yeah, well, maybe I can help her with it. Hold the bag for her. left that knife there. What difference does it make? You're going to kill us anyway. He tell you that? He didn't have to. I could see by the look on your face. Shows, huh? Shame to kill you. You're a good-looking woman. That's enough, baby. Come on, help me pick out a suit. Drop that gun. All right, we're going back in the living room. Come on. Hold it. Kitty's gun, dear. Come on, let's go. All right, Terry, give me a hand. Give me a hand, Terry. All right, sit down there. Now watch him, Terry. Hello, operator. This is Dr. Stanton at the Anson lab. Get hold of Sheriff Brenner and get him out here right away. I've got an escaped convict. Guy, how'd you get the gun? Terry brought it to me. Terry? But how? The X Factor, Nancy. You read my mind. He actually read your mind? Yeah. Are you still gonna leave? Terry. Factor. Scientific men have been using experimental animals for research for a great many years. Millions of humans owe their lives to scientific discoveries which could not have been made nor proved without experimental animals. All our vaccines and antitoxins, the entire field of surgery, were based on animal experiments. Someday, in a remote laboratory, a scientist may have a moment like the one you just saw, giving a new understanding to mental powers. I'll be back in just a moment. I hope you enjoyed our story. We'll be back with you a week from today with another exciting adventure from the world of fiction and science. Until then, this is your host, Truman Bradley, saying, see you next week. <laughs>